What's up, Reader? Shade Tree Surgeon here, hanging out at Burt's Black Widow. Never need much of an excuse to come down here. Gunner called me up and said they've got this 1997 Heritage in that's been all done up. This motorcycle has been completely restored by the guys at Black Widow. It's like everything that a 1997 Heritage should be, in my opinion anyway. Everything is chrome and shiny and beautiful. I like that. Big old Fat Bob tank, even the chrome floorboards, the big old headlight in the cell looking like a freight train. The only thing I might do is uh, fishtails on this and I get that they didn't because, you know, this is a raffle bike and fishtails aren't for everybody on a Heritage, but when it comes to me, I'm a fishtails man. So that might be the only thing I would change about this. But other than that, this bike is done up. When I say done up, I mean done up. It's very rare you look at an Evo and you look at the engine case of it and it looks this damn clean. All down here, not a speck of oil, not any dirt. Uh, almost seems a little too nice for my dumb ass to be riding it. And like I said, it is a bike that's being raffled off. Right now there's only 60 people that have entered to win this bike. I'll have a link down below. This is something that Burt's Salute to America is doing. If you guys know, it's something we've worked with before. I only work with two charities. That is Forgotten Angels and that's Burt's Salute to America because those are people where I know the money is going exactly where it needs to go. It doesn't hit any branches on the way down. There's no overhead. 100% every single ticket bought for this bike goes where it needs to go, which is helping homeless veterans find a home, get an address so they can start receiving VA benefits. If you guys didn't know this, and I know a lot of you guys are vets who watch this, the fact that anybody's homeless in America blows my mind. The fact that there are homeless veterans is even more just sickening to me. But you know what? You can't count on the government to do it, so sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. And in order for them to get VA benefits, they have to be in a house. They have to have a physical address. So that's what every single dollar of this bike is going to do. That's something that Bert and Project One Veteran at a Time is doing and they're doing it through this motorcycle and I'll tell you what, I don't ever mind being a bad person doing good things. So when you get to ride around a cool bike and tell you guys about it, uh, I'm certainly going to do that. This thing just sounds like the Wikipedia sound file for a Harley Davidson, you know? Literally potato on a monopia is over here. That's exactly what a Harley should sound like. The staggered pipe, man, they always give Nevo such a great sound. Uh, when Madam Hexen moved away, I was so close to buying her twin cam heritage. It just uh, wasn't in the cards for me, but I know it went to a good home. It's got a great home now, but uh, you know, if you're watching this, the man who bought it and you ever feel like getting off that thing, just let me know, brother. The beach bars ain't for everybody, but once again, man, for me, uh, you know, it's always either between apes or beach bars on a heritage like the Heritage Road Kings. Which it's always crazy to get on a bike that's an evolution engine, something that's 1997, and the thing since Birds got done with it, the sucker feels like it's brand goddamn new. <laughs> Woo! This thing moves all right. It's got a beat. I can dance to it. Now, uh, this is just the ultimate cruiser, man. Big back seat for the old lady or, uh, you know, a future ex-wife. You be the judge. Long, low, and mean, dude. It's like the kind of motorcycle that Danny Trejo would ride around. And while I'll certainly never be as cool as Danny Trejo, rest assured, neither will you. But at least if you're on this motorcycle, you can do your best approximation of Danny Trejo cool that you can. $20 gets you a chance for the Vic Law Heritage Classic. A completely restored Evo by Burt's Barracuda that is in, I mean, I literally, the engine looks like it came off the showroom floor. Not very often when you get an Evo engine that's clean enough that you can eat off the case. And while there can only be one winner, I'll tell you guys this. You can rest assured that the money's going to a good place. There's only a couple people I trust in this world. There's only a couple people that I really trust in this world when it comes to doing the right thing with charity dollars. And that's Dave and Cindy. Well, I guess that's three people, not a couple. Well, it's Dave and Cindy and Bert at Burt's Barracuda. Cuda, man. Those are the people who just really know what's up. Those are the people who really do the right thing. I know there's a lot of veterans who watch my channel. I never served myself. I certainly had a lot of friends who served and certainly had a lot of family members who served as well. And the idea of after they did their service for the country that they are now homeless and the organization that's supposed to take care of them won't even take care of them until they can get inside an address just absolutely just it's unbelievable to me. But you know, that's why uh, everything I do on here, I don't do anything directly, of course, because I'm not much of a social worker. I kind of just talk shit, but pretty much everything we do on this channel when it comes to helping charity, whether it's with veterans or whether it's with teens who've aged out of the foster care system, it's all kind of based around someone lacking a home. The idea that someone could not have a home, that someone doesn't have a place to lay their head. So that's what we do here. So 20 bucks, six for a hundred, this bike could be your bike. Like we always say, we're bad people doing good things, man. Gambling for a good cause.
All right, guys, back in the garage here with the dung beetle with what is hopefully the final push to get ready for the Adam Sandoval flathead camp out at Yerga Springs, Bikes, Blues, Barbecues, and holy crap, that's a lot of words. I'm out of breath. I can't remember them all. Anyway, so what we're trying to do is uh, get a Sportster front end on this Goldwing right here. And why a Sportster front end, you ask with good reason. Most people would go, why would you put Harley Davidson parts on a perfect bean like a Goldwing? Well, I like I actually like Harleys as well, but yes, there's a good reason to put Harley Davidson parts on Goldwing. The first bean, this is a Harley Davidson part on Goldwing already, except it's not. It's a Showa front end, which Harley Davidson Sportsters, Dinas, and many other models use a Showa front end. It's literally the same thing. This is a 39 millimeter front end right here. It's just an older style. The lower legs are older, although have some weird old tech on them with Honda's anti-dive system. On top of that, the 39 millimeter forks on a Sportster have upgrades available to them that these do not. Namely, the Traction Dynamics custom dampening rods, custom springs, and a gold valving that they offer for it, which gives you up to seven inches of suspension travel and about an inch and a half a lift. We're gonna take those off. We're converting down to just one front disc and we're putting, sport we're putting Sportster forks on this. I don't know how this is going to go. Bear with me. Right now we're just going to get it mocked up because obviously we're going to have to make a, a turn a custom axle for this. This is going to take custom parts. You can't just throw a regular axle in there because these trees are not a standard length apart. An axle is literally just, it's just a piece of metal. It's just a rod of metal that's like thick in some places, thinner in others. Threads on one end usually, sometimes on both ends. Anyway, axles are not hard to make. Well, they're not hard to make if you're Joe the Mountain Jedi. They'd be hard to make for me. I don't think I could turn an axle on a lathe, but it's not hard for Joe. So let's go ahead and mock up this front end. They actually sell a bracket to reuse these brakes, these Tokiko brakes, on a 39 millimeter front end. You can reuse these with the proper bracket, but I'm gonna put something a little nicer than that on there. Now before I get too far into this, these are air shocks. Luckily they're not hooked up to an actual air pump. Air shocks that you fill up through a little Schrader valve right up here. Pretty sure they're dead empty because they leaked anyway, but let's go ahead and make sure. Yeah, there ain't nothing in these things. Um, before I completely take both of these out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and slide one 39 millimeter fork leg. Well, sorry, they're both 39. I'm gonna slide one Sportster fork, fork leg in and leave one Goldwing fork leg in so I can kind of see what the difference in height's gonna be. Come. Okay, let's try a little BB blaster. Oh, it is just too hot for this crap, man. Holy. There we go. Jeez, so oh, Pete. Well, that's one way to get the sticker off. Okay, let's go ahead and shove this Sportster fork leg up there and uh, see what we can see. Definitely gonna have to clean these up anyway. They've got some pitting on them and stuff, but other than that, they're in pretty good shape. And they're exactly like it should because they're the same size. It's literally the same top to bottom's a little different, but 39 millimeters, 39 millimeters. Why wouldn't it clamp in there, right? Oh, well, just eyeballing it. It does look like the axle is gonna be about a half an inch lower than the stock axle, which uh, the kit I'm getting will also raise it a further one and a half inches once I have the damping rods of the springs in these Sportster tubes. I'm probably gonna be a little bit over because I only raised up the rear a little over an inch and I want it to have the stock balance between the front and the rear. Luckily, I do have some room up here. I've got plenty of room to go up in the fork tubes a little bit if I need to. So I'm gonna try it just uh, once we have everything installed. If it all works, I'm gonna try it in this location and just see how it handles and see how it sits. But if I have to, just to prevent wobbliness in the front end, which I'm sure I'll have to, I, I got room. I got room to go up an inch here and make up that difference. a brake rotor on it just so I know what I'm working with here. Literally just for mock-up anyway, so it's not like this is staying on here like this or anything. That is way over to one side. Definitely gonna have to space this caliper out, but the caliper bracket I have coming 
comes with spacers. I just hope it comes with enough to move it over enough to get this wheel to track in the center. So when everyone's paying me compliments and going, how would you get that on there? <laughs> I'm gonna go, uh, well, <laughs> just give them the old Jedi mind trick and be like, this is not the gold wing you're looking for. That is pretty damn centered. If it's not absolutely centered in the forks, it'll be within a millimeter. Well, somehow that's gonna become an axle. Joe knows how, I don't. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like some kind of Jules Verne contraption. You know when you're doing that, when you're moving all those things around? It looks like uh, 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Prime example of learning how to pack the head while you're running your belly. Hopping on one foot. Well, I'm looking for 875 or 0.875, literally 0.8755. <laughs> Half a foul. Bang. Damn, dude. Now we have it. The sword in the stone, the holy grail. A part which, before today, has never existed anywhere. Of course, axles have existed. An axle that will allow me to run a sportster front end on a gold wing triple tree. That has never existed anywhere, to my knowledge, because why would somebody ever do this? I think I have pretty good reasons for doing it, but I can't think of any reason why anybody else would have done it before then. So, Joe the Mountain Jedi, absolutely amazing. This was just like a two inch bar of steel the other day, and now it's an axle. That's pretty amazing for a couple hours on the lathe, man. Joe really can work some magic, man. Or why? Oh, I'm sorry, not magic. He uses the force, not magic. He's a Jedi, not a wizard. All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is not going super well. I don't know how we're gonna get this done. I've been uh, messing up parts. I've been making mistakes, and I've been generally kind of doing a very bad job at getting this done, and I'm supposed to leave in like 36 hours. I'm not making this up. I never am. I don't know, sometimes I think people watch the channel, they go, man, Josh is just making it up, and he's on the wire again. Oh no, she tree surgeon's on the wire. I'm not, dude, it's just, I just suck, and it's always like this. But, uh, you know, I would say I do my best work with my back against the wall, but but, you know, those are the ones that everybody remembers, not the times you fail. So let's see if this is one that someone's gonna remember and not just another failure. All right, okie dokie. Let's put eight inches of suspension travel on a gold wing. Why the hell not? It's kind of where we started this out. Great idea, right? All right, these things have like some sort of preload adjuster on them. So let's see if I can actually get this out without busting my fingers open on that. Right, come on, no whammies. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Oops, probably need that. All right, well, let's drain the fluid out of it next. My favorite part. I would say that uh, among my least favorite fluids is probably old suspension oil. It's freaking gross. Let's see if we can do this without uh, having to drill anything out. The way my luck's going, I'm not holding my freaking breath right now. Come on now. Fucking serious, dude. Uh, damn it, dude. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted to see. There we go. There's the bastard. All right, let's try again. Fucker. See if we can beat this thing off without knocking the whole freaking gold wing over. Oh, well, that came off uh, easier than I expected. Well, there's that fucking offending motherfucker. If I find Loctite on this, I'm gonna spit. Well, I'm about to show you guys why the Traction Dynamics kit actually does what it does. It's all in the dampening rod. So this is what a stock dampening rod looks like. And this is what a Traction Dynamics dampening rod looks like. Obviously, you can tell there's a little bit of difference here. So that's what gives us all the suspension travel. And the fact that they did springs that were set up for my weight and a Goldwing's weight. So it's all good.
now that I have these two things on here, you can really see the difference in uh, how much length the Traction Dynamics kit supplies over the stock one. It's uh, pretty dramatic. All right, baby, time for that upgrade. We're going to one single disc, so if we're just gonna have one disc, I want it to count. Yeah, we got a ways uh, to move over. <laughs> That's for sure. Closer. Not there, but closer. Definitely have to shave some off this caliper and hit this wheel. You know, I'll tell you, the mark of a good friend is a friend who fixes the stuff that you said you were going to fix uh, like a year ago. I swear I'm going to get to this. I swear I'm going to fix this. And I've been swearing for a really long time. And then, uh, like I said, good friends just go ahead and go, it's time to stop cussing and we're just going to do it for you. So, thank you. Okay, this place is a wreck, but I have a tire with properly mounted disc brake and I have what should be uh, seven to eight inches of suspension travel. Yeah, I still haven't actually ridden this thing. I don't know if I've just totally ruined this motorcycle. That is a real possibility, but we are taking the stabbing wagon, which there's also no guarantee that won't make it either. This is the very dubious backup to a very dubious vehicle. There goes nothing. Well team, that was a whole lot of trials and tribulations to make a motorcycle that might work. Might, big might. I don't know, I mean, I can still use a kickstand. That's a bonus. Supposedly I've got a bunch of suspension travel up front. I'm two inches higher in the rear, about an inch and a half higher in the rear. I've got the seat on here. I didn't even talk about the seat, dude, the seat. We got the bench seat. I wanted a seat that was in line with the tank so you can stand up easier and you got a little bit of a higher perspective there. I don't know how this is gonna work though. On this motorcycle, we have forks from a 2002 Sportster, a wheel from a 1997 Dyna, a skid plate that was originally designed for a GL1800 from the 2000s. We've got shocks from a 1987 GL1200 on this 1983, of course. We've got uh, an adventure bike top box. We've got, of course, Gorf. Gorf sees you. Gorf is always watching. We've got MX foot pegs. We've got uh, MX handlebars, the pro tapers up here. We've got a windshield from a Pan America and we have brakes off a GSXR 1000. All in all, this is a pretty confused motorcycle. Perfect for me. Exactly the kind of motorcycle I like. Something very, very confused of dubious quality put together by yours truly with a lot of help, not a little help, with a lot of help from my friends. I absolutely could have not have done this without the expertise of Joe, the Mountain Jedi and his amazing fabrication skills. I have, I have four fabrication skills. He has amazing ones. And together, even though I almost messed up what he did, together we actually can make something. We probably have a lot better time making it without me involved. But guess what? I'm here, okay? I'm just a, a character building experience. Maybe he was a bad guy in a previous life and I've been sent here to punish Joe as he tries to make nice stuff. Anyway, well, uh, you guys are gonna have to wait till the next episode to see if this motorcycle works or not, cause, cause I don't even have time to finish up. I gotta leave here in a few hours and I still have to get the old stabbing wagon ready. Uh, it's no guarantee that one's gonna make it either. And we're supposed to leave in like, I don't know, eight hours or something like that. And I still should probably sleep. Worst comes to worst, I can ride the bike, even though it's very much untested at highway speeds. This will do highway speeds, but, uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into that and see if we can make the RV run properly. Anyway, I know it always seems like I'm making this stuff up and I'm on the wire and I just, there's so much drama and it's not that, that it's not that I'm making it up. It's not that I'm doing this for YouTube. I just, I'm just this disorganized, which if you've been following my channel for a long time, you, you already know that, you already know that. So, till next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky, 
comes a fearful cry Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Armies of the night Evil taking flight Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide Panic spreading far and wide Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree, army, shade tree, army. Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree, army, shade tree, army? They never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.